Hello and very warm welcome to all our viewers. My name is Lara and we're here at Bite Me Burger in DIFC. Now joining me this morning is a very, very special guest. And of course, we're talking about none other than Diksha Kandotra from Versatile Consultancy. Hello and a very warm welcome. How are you doing, Diksha? I'm good. Thank you so much, Lara, for today. And I feel abs uh, in absolute utmost uh, joy to be here and uh, sitting right next to you. It's such a pleasure to have you with us on the show this morning. We're going to start off by asking you to tell us a little bit more about Diksha Kandotra. Sure. Who is she and how long has she been in the region for? Sure. So, hi, um, I am um, I'm Diksha. I originally am from India, mm -hmm. but I've been in the region for the last six years. And um, originally, if, if you go back to my education, I'm a, I'm a finance person. I've done my uh, bachelor's in finance and I have gone on to doing my ACCA, which is the UK Chartered Accountancy. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, and I went to do my diploma in finance uh, at LSE as well. London School of Economics. London School of One of the top universities. Cities. Yeah, so um, um, I come from a very, very versatile background where I always saw the women in my family doing extremely well. My mother and her sister are very well established fashion designers back in Delhi, which is the capital of India. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father has always been in business and in trading. And my grandfather was a chartered accountant with a very, very old chartered accountancy firm. And that's how I ended up doing my degree. Uh, although I was very attracted to finance always, but but my ultimate aim in life was to be an entrepreneur and um, because I always grew up seeing two very successful ladies in my house uh, so my aim was to build a name um, I didn't know uh, after, I mean I had opportunity to join the big fours uh, which is like on the likes of KPMG Deloitte and Ernst & Young but uh, that is something that's a path I didn't want to traverse I didn't want to join even my grandfather's uh, child accountancy firm because I just didn't feel that this was me it was it, was, it felt always like I'm limiting myself mm -hmm. so about six years ago um, so my brother he was in Singapore between Singapore and London and my father was all across the globe so we all decided that the family needs to be together and we we decided Dubai is the ideal place to be and uh, it was close to home so we all shifted uh, to Dubai uh, six years ago and I joined my brother's travel company um, he said just help me set it up I was still studying that time I was 23 and uh, I was finishing my ACCM so um, in the process um, an opportunity came to um, start a recruitment come HR consultancy mm -hmm. um, the idea behind this whole concept was uh, global recruitment and I always had a very deep understanding of uh, people like I could understand who would fit where and I used to do this as a pro bono for my friends who were starting their companies and um, so a friend a very dear friend of mine in fact started an events company and I placed almost all the people I knew in her company <laughs> and she said how do you do this so naturally so it's, it's just something which came very very naturally to me and it's been five years of versatile consultancy and now we are partners in almost 44 countries Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Now, who is it that you target as your clients with Versatile Consultancy? I mean, who is it that you work with? So, um, Versatile uh, Consultancy as a recruitment company, or uh, if I could just put it in other words, as a HR company because recruitment becomes a part of it, mm -hmm. it's, tar uh, it tar it's actually industry agnostic. So, if you understand uh, positions, if you understand the industry, you, you're not limited so but our primary focus has always been a hospitality industry healthcare industry construction law finance finance because I myself come from a finance background and it's just funny that I'm only surrounded by lawyers in my life so I have a very deep understanding of lawyers uh, of law as a subject so placing the right lawyers and um, uh, so and what, another USB we bring with our company is that we are uh, position agnostic. Mm -hmm. So we have teams divided who are looking into whether it's um, the C-level positions or whether it's the uh, mid-range positions or it's the junior levels. Or So how we divide it, it it's called the white collar, gray collar and it's called the blue collar. Okay. So we cater to all. Now a lot of blue collar uh, workers come in from 
uh, out of Dubai or out of the Middle East. So we are primarily working right now with our office in Dubai and Saudi Arabia. Okay. And um, um, the industries which uh, we are really focusing are on hospitality and healthcare. And hospitality was really booming before this. And as you know, even Saudi it was becoming a hub because it was opening up. And uh, so um, that's so true. But even healthcare is booming right yes, now. Yes, healthcare. And I'm sure hospitality will come back on track as soon as all this is over. So. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We, people can't stay at home. They need to get out. Absolutely. They need to be out. They can, and Dubai has a culture of uh, expats and expats don't like staying at home. They don't. And they love wine and dining and we have such a variety of restaurants here in Dubai so absolutely the food and beverage industry is definitely on the grow right right yeah. and in fact it's not uh, um, I mean uh, it's not limited so we are uh, uh, I mean um, like people say oh Dubai is a saturated market well when it comes to F&B there's literally every brand over here but what we don't understand is the five like 50 new brands open there 50 new 50 old which close also so there's mm. always scope for new Absolutely. there is always New York is uh, one of the biggest hubs for F&B that's right 500 brands open every year and close does that mean it's a saturated market no, no. We don't there's say always that, right? place for newcomers. Yes, there's absolutely a lot of place for newcomers. And I think what really sells is the concept. If yes. your concept is unique, you can make it in the market. It's about gauging the audience and maintaining quality. So when we are providing uh, people, uh, we, we, we uh, we certainly try to provide a 360 or a turnkey solution wherein we we are providing people who have a long-lasting effect on the company mm -hmm. wherein the customers want to come again and again you know so that is that is very important like if it's the chef it has to be the exec chef has to be good and it's somebody who people really want to come back to because if it's a restaurant it's the exec chef who is responsible for everything absolutely right? he's if, the key yeah so that's what oh that's what we are always aiming at is getting the right people um but that is when we talk about the hospitality industry healthcare on the other side so we've just partnered with a healthcare consultancy which is um which provides a turnkey solution for healthcare including operations and management so recruitment becomes a part of it mm -hmm. but uh, since we understand operations because uh, back home i do come from a family which owns uh, hospitals and uh, i understand the healthcare industry so versatile doesn't just come by the name of it but uh, really grew up living different industries whether it was retail whether it was healthcare whether it was hospitality or whether it was really running a business so um, um, now this uh, when it comes to healthcare what's very very critical are the doctors mm -hmm. uh, what we specialize is in bringing these doctors from uh, across the world but in the Middle East the focus is always on two or three nationalities where uh, they need the doctors from either they are UK qualified or they are of Asian origin a lot of Indian doctors we have over here um, or Arab doctors and when we talk about Arab doctors Jordanian Syrian doctors are really preferred in the region sure yeah and um, there are a lot of Egyptian doctors as well um, but now they're drifting towards other uh, Arab nationalities uh, so we were just doing a recruitment for a um, hospital in um, Riyadh it's a new uh, hospital which is open it's a five-star facility and uh, even in such uh, in COVID circumstances you know you're supposed to get the doctors with a transfer transferable account I don't know how to explain that because it's a very uh, Saudi term in terms of you need to get the people from there with all the uh, correct documentation yeah, yeah. so yeah. we were able to do that even in these uh, tight circumstances and I think that was the that, those were the few industries and clients who helped us traverse to, uh, towards uh, through COVID okay. and uh, even um, you know, uh, COVID was, um, um, I mean, it was a time where everybody had to reflect. It was a time where everybody took a hit. But I'm very thankful for it because this is the time Versatile became part of a world organization called IPTER, which is a world recruitment, executive recruitment organization with uh, partners from across 44 countries. That's wonderful. So from Dubai, uh, Versatile, actually, 
GCC versatile was chosen mm -hmm. and uh, we are representing the Middle East region. There is a person from Morocco but other than him it's just us who is taking care of the GCC region and uh, we have partners from Europe. Actually we cover all continents uh, and um, it's it, it was I think my one of my most amazing experiences because uh, we were able to uh, understand so many other nationalities because earlier we were only restricted to getting people from the Eastern Europe, Africa or Asian region. Now, right. now our uh, scope, our reach has become much, much more. Congratulations on thank that. Thank you, thank you so, so much. So next time we want to hire, whether it's a lawyer, whether it's a doctor, yep. whether it's a waiter, restaurant manager, executive chef, we're definitely coming to Thank you, you. <laughs> thank you. Look, look forward sure. to, look, look sure. forward to. And um, it's not only limited to um, uh, limited to these industries, but if you're a, a digital marketing company also, and you need the right graphic designers, and you need the right sales or business development people, we help procuring that so because we have uh, our team is a uh, mix of Gen X uh, millennials and uh, the old the older uh, sect so there is a matured as well as the new blood so what helps with that is to understand the upcoming up like the trends and all it's very important to have the millennial or the new blood pumped in for sure so that is I think that is what is there in our organization and we love to train um, you know, uh, new uh, new graduates because that's when they have all the zeal, and we need, we love putting them in direction. So we've taken a lot of interns to turn them around, and you know, and then they always join our company. And they, they there's so many who've been working with us now for years. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now getting back to the IWS, which is the International Women's Entrepreneur Society. Yeah. How did you come across this amazing platform, uh, Diksha? Um, I think last year I was uh, there was a two day seminar. Uh, mm -hmm. which had been conducted I think uh, somewhere in Jumeirah Jumeirah Beach Hotel yes. Conference Centre yes. yes yes so I was uh, invited for that mm -hmm. and uh, I attended one day of the seminar because I was uh, booked for the other day and I had a very very good experience in fact uh, the speakers were very good and uh, there were a few a lot of people I knew who I met there and it was um, they, uh, I mean it was very well collected very informative it was just not like a um, it was not just another seminar or a boring, you know, uh, six hours of uh, just sitting over there. But it was real good information. There was a lawyer on board. There was so they were they gave, there was somebody who had written a book. But my um, uh, but the biggest or I think the biggest connection I made over there, uh, not in terms of commercially, but I mean connection mentally, mm -hmm. was with Suad Al Shamsi, who was the astronaut. Uh, no, not the astronaut, the aeronautical engineer. Yes, and yeah. she was such an inspiration. Her story was so good and such a humble and down to earth person. She's a lovely person and she is a true inspiration to a lot of women out there. Yeah, so I mean, um, uh, with the struggle she went through and went on to becoming the first aeronautical uh, uh, aeronautical engineer in the region, it just, uh, I mean, it just boosted my uh, confidence, energy, and I, I, I think um, uh, that is what the region needs. Absolutely, uh, people like her who can be looked up to and. What IWS is doing is a wonderful thing because it's really recognizing the real people, the people who are really making the difference in the country. Like you know, with whatever, um, with whatever contribution, it doesn't matter. Quantity doesn't matter, but what sort of quality they are bringing. Absolutely. And uh, so since then, I've been connected with them, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then I came across all the good work uh, being done on Instagram. I've been following them since forever, and. Uh, uh, there was a great opportunity when I was called upon for uh, having an interview with yourself. Well, it's such a pleasure to have you with us on the show today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank now, you. getting back to Diksha, um, being the female successful entrepreneur yeah. that you are, yeah. what would you say has been your greatest obstacle or greatest challenge being a female working here in the Middle East or even in the GCC? Um, honestly, I come from a country where uh, obstacles are probably at par. It's not something where uh, it's a, it's not been a very easy. Uh, it's not an easy journey for women out there, also. But uh, we are seeing this spike of women entrepreneurs from India in India. But uh, honestly, Lara, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that I had to go through a lot of. Um, um, issues because uh, I treated them always as my as my learning curve mm -hmm. um, 
When I started my life or I started my entrepreneurial journey, it started with Dubai. Okay. So uh, when it started with Dubai, it, uh, I, I can only be thankful because I only got opportunities. Although it was not like I didn't go through my downfalls. I went through my downfalls. But what I learned during my downfalls, I mean, those are those I think I couldn't have learned at a university. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have learned. Um, um, I couldn't have learned from any book. So that I treasure it. I don't call it as an obstacle. Um, uh, I mean, I've even ended up doing uh, work for charity because I didn't know that some people could actually cheat, sign contracts, and not ever pay. It happens. Of course, it happens. And I, uh, even though um, Versatile Consultancy is proud of part of my family business or it's a group of companies, but I have always treated this as my own baby, independent of the company, which was never commercially dependent. So whether all, the, whether it was any sort of expenses or anything, it was all under me. Mm -hmm. So if I was going down, if the company was going down, I was going down. Absolutely. <laughs> and there was, there have been very, very difficult clients as well. But um, but I always I always look back, reflect, and feel what I learned there. There have some there have been uh, some clients who come back after two years, three years, but they came back because probably of the service we provided, and maybe they they felt that they didn't do right at that point of time, and they came back. They referred to somebody who who ended up giving us a lot of business. So I always remember one thing: one of my mentors, uh, who was um, their pioneers in the. Uh, manpower business he told me something which resonates with me till date which is that he said that um, back in Saudi Arabia he had got an assignment for uh, one driver mm -hmm. one driver is hardly an assignment but he was always of that um, wisdom or I think uh, mindset that he said I, 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 I said okay maybe it's just one driver but um, I want to do it why uh, because I don't know what might happen tomorrow and maybe because of this one relation what I, what could happen ahead in the future so he said never say no he did that one driver assignment and uh, a year after he got a assignment of 3,000 people from the same person recruitment of 3,000 people from Asian region into Saudi Arabia. That's amazing. So definitely one should never say no. Never say no never to close anything. Any door, never Absolutely. Close, never block out any opportunity. Not Always not be open. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you really don't know. You know, uh, there are times when I say, oh my God, there's so many webinars to attend. Oh my God, there are so many places to go. But you know the the risk of missing that one percent of that opportunity how can you let that go it's so true how can you let so that true. go so um I, i've always believed in that and i think um uh, one thing which uh, i truly truly believe in is um that it's a world of collaboration not competition mm -hmm. that what you can do together you cannot do it alone. Absolutely. So whether it's uh, recruitment companies, whether it's healthcare consultancies, whether it's F&B consultancies, I always am open to working together. I never say that, okay, or uh, we as an organization never say that we are closed doors. Um, I mean, uh, we might be in competition, but we can always work together. And that has always been our principle. And I think the reason for where we are today is because of our open mindset. And I think that is the way forward. If the world wants to grow together, we grow together. We don't, we don't grow individually. We can't grow alone. United, we're more powerful. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. Absolutely. Excellent mindset. <laughs> Diksha, last but not least, what message do you have for the female and male viewers that are watching us right now, um, setting up their own business, already have an established business here in the region? What would you say to them? Um, what tips, advice do you have for them from your personal experience? Uh, I think something which works always mm -hmm. and which works in every industry is networking. And I feel there is nothing or there is no other business development program which can which can get you business the way networking can. So if you are an are a, a entrepreneur or you're just starting your journey or you're still in your journey and you've not explored this aspect of life, there are a lot of networking groups out there. There are a lot of places you can network. It's a small investment. It is a time investment, which is what is the real investment. Sure, that is. <laughs> but, that is. But, but the relations you make there, my growth happened because of networking. So I, I say that's a 100% guarantee that network. And that is where uh, 
wherever in whichever field you would be you'd grow during covid what we saw is that there was a huge rise of entrepreneurs why because people lost their jobs That's there right. were there were i think um uh, gazillions of people who have lost their jobs mm -hmm. and uh, we were doing um, we were fortunate enough to be doing um, a seminar for a webinar rather for uh, the Emirates staff who's been laid off. There's a lady; she's been doing amazing work. So we, she was, an, she invited us to speak to them. So what we, what I could see is all these people had these desires inside them which they never converted, mm -hmm. which they never could do because of whatever reasons out there. Uh, but because of uh, COVID, they got that chance. Because they had no chance, they got that chance. And true. Now, if you have a dream, but you don't have the money or you don't have the power to go, there are angel investors out there. Mm -hmm. You have an idea. You, if you have a brilliant idea, you can make it. You have to have the will for it. You need to know how to network or learn how to network. Or there is, you will learn. Get into it. Get inside the herd. You learn how to swim. You learn how to run. But get in there. I mean, don't give up any single day. Never say never. And always remember. Um, um, one key thing which has been successful for us is collaboration always be open to that because you never know. be mindful for sure but always be open for that that is where the real growth is Diksha, we want to thank you for spending some time with us on today's thank show. It's thank been a true so pleasure much. talking to you. It's and been my pleasure. <laughs> and wishing you continued growth and success in all your thank future you. ventures. Thank you so much. It thank is my you. pleasure. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for. My name is Lara signing off. Until next time. <laughs>